this is what we know. Um, that there was a, a huge rebellion that was begun. Um, it was named after the man who started it, Nathaniel Bacon. Bacon. Yeah, with it, Bacon's, it, rebellion. Bacon's Rebellion. Bacon's Rebellion. And um, it, it was, and, and let me even take one step back before sure. I jump into that. So it was um, just to create the context of what gave rise to Bacon's Rebellion. Right. It was kind of the perfect storm. There were, um, uh, the king had given most of the good land, the good farmable land to his buddies, right? right? So even if you were lucky enough to survive your term of indenture or, or purchase your freedom, there wasn't much land for you to find to farm. Um, so it's like it was old modern day nepotism. It, was, yeah, exactly. Even back then, it stretched all the way back then. And okay. it happens even to this well day. Before, yes. right, right. <laughs> well before. Right, right. Well before. Well before. And um, uh, the price of tobacco dropped. The king increased taxes. So there were so many people who were who were struggling. Um, that population boom in England ended by mid-century, and so the large plantation owners were absolutely panicked about how they're going to replenish their their labor supply because the vast majority of human beings in these colonies were poor British men. The vast majority, um, and so. What was beginning to happen, because the plantation owners were panicked, was that they began to impose really harsh punishments on indentured and enslaved people for really minor infractions. I see. So uh, trying to hold on. So they, there were lots of unhappy people at right. this moment, um, small farmers and the like. And so Nathaniel Bacon didn't really have to look hard to find disgruntled, unhappy people. Um, it was easy for him to find these individuals because everybody was already mad as it is. Absolutely. And so what what happened, sort of the, the trigger point, was that Nathaniel Bacon believed that some of his neighbors' indentured servants had been murdered by a surrounding um, Native American tribe. And he was furious that Governor Berkeley didn't respond violently. Um, and so the first phase of Bacon's rebellion was, in fact, um, an assault on friendly and unfriendly um, Native American people. So, I see. Yeah, so that's a really unfortunate piece right. of, of Bacon's Rebellion. Uh, but the second piece of it was an outright assault on the uh, ruling elite in Virginia, who at the time when so many people in the colony were struggling, um, there were a few who were getting very, very rich. Right. Um, and so they really rebelled against the ruling elite. Ulti the, the rebellion was, um, it was enormous. It lasted well over a year, and ultimately it wasn't quashed until the English sent in troops. So, and, and what we know, and we know this largely from the work of um, Theodore Allen, uh, he, he digs into the written communication between the Legal Oversight Authority sure. in uh, Virginia and, um, excuse me, in, in England and the ruling elite in Virginia, like their communications going back and forth. And we learn from his research that um, lots of ruling elite in the colonies, not just those two, were really um, concerned and feeling insecure in light of Bacon's Rebellion. But perhaps the most important thing that we learn from that research is that the lawmakers in Virginia, once, once the rebellion was quashed, told their corporate shareholders, because Virginia was a corporation, um, don't worry, we've got this under control. We are going to pursue a divide and conquer strategy. Mm -hmm. And it is what follows right. that creates society that you and I will recognize. I see. And it is in this moment that we see for the first time in law a group of people called white people um, appearing in the laws themselves. So, so this is what happens. They are... Um, pursuing a divide and conquer strategy. So the 99% who up until this moment had really been united um, and viewed each other and experienced each other as, as similar, um, that will never be the same and never has been the same. Um, and what created this new society where the 99% see ourselves as different, different races, different in all these ways that keep us from ever focusing on the 1%, um, were a slew of laws we see after Bacon's Rebellion, uh, laws that made it um, illegal for a person of African descent um, from running for public office, uh, prohibited white people from marrying people of African descent, members of native tribes, and we see that law throughout US history, and it prohibits only white people. It's, it's not about... Um, prohibiting interracial marriages. Anti-miscegenation laws, Loss what that's called, called, were only concerned with white people. 
right? So, so a person of Native American descent right. could marry, let's say, a person of Chinese descent, even though both were understood through most of U.S. history up until today, frankly, as racially different and distinct. Sure. Um, but anti-miscegenation law didn't care about that. They only cared, it only cared about white people.